Nearly every Sunday morning, we have visitors to our Quaker meeting for worship. They enter the front door tentatively, peering around the 1892 meeting house, taking in the oaken pews, the fine cracks and the horsehair plaster, the carved pulpit raised in 1957 when Jean Lewis, six foot four, was our pastor. The pulpit had been made in the early 1900s under the ecclesial leadership of Sarah Woodard, five foot two. A regulator clock hangs next to the door. Dick Given winds it each Sunday morning. Dick was, for many years, the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Indiana, but now is our resident clock winder, dishwasher, and snow shoveler. The customary response when people discover I'm a Quaker are, one, I thought you all were dead. Two, aren't you like the Amish? And three, the oatmeal people, right? Though the Bible warns against pride, we Quakers take a certain pleasure in our eccentricities. We don't vote on church matters and mistrust would-be bishops. When we don't agree on a matter, we talk about it, sometimes for years. There is too much hardball in religion today, too much invective and taking no prisoners, much of it piped through the air and into our homes telling us whom to hate and what to fear. The Quakers in my meeting joke about striking back, of televising our meeting for worship. 120 Quakers sitting on oaken pews in an 1892 meeting house, a little singing, a dab of preaching, then 30 minutes of silence with viewers whacking their televisions, thinking they've gone on the blink, jabbing at the volume button on their remote, their anger mounting. I'm not sure whether our visitors are put off by our low church simplicity or charmed by it, but I can usually tell who will come back for another visit. Men wearing ties seldom return. I sit on the liberal side of religion at God's left hand, but dress conservatively and I'm hard to pin down. People carrying big Bibles usually don't come back we have perfectly serviceable Bibles in our pews and see no need to arm ourselves with additional copies. One Sunday, a man visited carrying a Bible so large it needed built-in wheels. He didn't make it halfway through meeting for worship. I'm embarrassed to admit it, but when I saw him, I was reminded of Little Red Riding Hood and the wolf. My, what a big Bible you have, said Little Red. All the better to bludgeon you, answered the wolf. Men who are handy with tools think twice about returning. They spend the hour studying our old meeting house, envisioning a lifetime of indentured servitude stretching before them. We reel them in slowly, first asking them to replace a fuse. When they agree, the hook is set. Within the next year, we'll have them balancing precariously on ladders, painting soffits and re-roofing the meeting house. If they should fall from the ladder and perish, we Quakers do a wonderful job with memorial services. If you are fortunate enough to expire in the bosom of a Quaker meeting, you will receive a send-off like no other. Dozens of people will testify of your fine qualities, whether you had any or not. I once conducted a funeral service and had 13 members of the deceased family join our meeting the next week. In the 21st century, this is what it means to be Quaker in my neck of the woods, retaining some traditions while jettisoning others. It remains to be seen whether we have distinguished correctly between the essential and the trivial. I pondered these matters and more while sitting in meeting, the regulator clock subtracting the minutes until we shall meet the Lord.